What's up guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to make chocolate cream pie. This recipe calls for a 9 inch pie crust, and you can either use store bought pie crust or you can make your pie crust at home. If you are interested in making your pie crust at home, you can find a great homemade pie crust recipe in the description. Now let's get started. And we're going to start out with the filling, which is basically just chocolate pudding. So take three large eggs and separate the egg yolks from the egg whites and put them in a large mixing bowl. Next, add in one and a half cups of sugar and use either egg beaters or a whisk to mix this stuff together until homogenous. When it looks like this, you're done. Next, add to the mixture four tablespoons of cornstarch, one half cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, one teaspoon of salt, and then mix this stuff together until combined. Then gently stir in three cups of milk, and don't worry if your mixture has a few chunks in it because we're going to cook this stuff, and after cooking we're going to run it through a strainer to make sure that the filling is smooth. So once your dry and wet ingredients are combined, dump the mixture into a medium sized saucepan and bring it to a boil on medium high heat while constantly stirring. And the reason you want to be stirring the whole time is so that the filling doesn't stick to the bottom of the pan. And when the filling starts to thicken, it thickens really fast. So don't be afraid to take it off the heat for a minute or two while stirring because the pan is really hot and the filling is going to keep thickening even when it's not on the stove. Plus you can always put it back on the heat if needed. And you definitely don't want to overcook this stuff because then you're going to have to start all over and it's going to suck. So just take it slow and you'll be fine. So once the filling has thickened to the consistency of chocolate pudding, take it off the heat and set it aside for a minute or two while you grab a large mixing bowl and a strainer. Then add to the bowl one tablespoon of butter and one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract and pour the filling through the strainer into the bowl. And you can use a spatula to push the filling through the strainer so that you don't waste any of the filling and so that you can break up any chunks that may be in the filling. That way it'll come out nice and smooth. So once all of the filling is in the bowl, stir it up until the butter is completely melted and incorporated. Next, cover the filling with plastic wrap, putting the plastic wrap directly on top of the filling so that the two are touching, and this is going to keep a skin from forming on top of the filling. So once the filling is covered, you can pop it in the refrigerator until later. So now I'm going to show you guys how to blind bake a pie crust. So start by taking your pie crust out of the refrigerator and letting it sit for 5 minutes to come up in temperature, and this is going to make it easier to roll out. After 5 minutes is up, flour your rolling surface, your dough, and your rolling pin, and then we're going to roll out our pie crust. If your dough still seems a bit tough, use your rolling pin to kind of hammer out your pie crust at the beginning, and this is going to keep your pie crust from cracking as you roll it out. Now don't be afraid to be generous with the flour as you're rolling out your pie crust because since the pie crust is cold, you're not really going to have an issue with the flour sticking to the dough. And once you start rolling, it's best to roll from the center of the dough out to the end without rolling past the end. And this is going to keep your dough from sticking to your rolling surface. And you should be rotating your dough while rolling to keep it as circular as possible. Now this recipe is for a 9 to 10 inch pie, so the goal here is to roll your dough out to about 12 inches across on all sides and about an eighth of an inch thick. Now you can use whatever you want to measure your dough. This rolling pin actually has a ruler etched into it, so it makes it super easy to get to your desired size without having to step away from your workspace. Now if you want to pick one of these up, you can check out the shop on our website. I really think it's a great tool that makes life just a little bit easier. So after you're done rolling, you can pick up your pie crust with your rolling pin, set it to the side, and then begin to prep your pie plate for baking. To do this, get a cold stick of butter and spread it all over the bottom and sides of the dish, and then sprinkle the inside of the dish with flour and shake it around until the dish is coated. This is going to keep your pie crust from sticking to the inside of the dish. So after you've prepped your pie plate, you can grab your dough and lay it into the dish while lifting and pressing firmly into the sides and bottom of the dish. This is going to keep the dough from stretching and ultimately ripping, and it's going to help make sure that there are no air pockets between the dough and the dish itself. Now that the dough is secured in the dish, we're going to trim off any excess dough so that there is only about a half an inch of dough hanging over the side of the dish. Now save this excess dough just in case your dough rips while crimping, that way you can fix any potential mistakes. After you've trimmed any excess dough, you're going to roll the edge of the pie crust under itself, tucking it into the dish while pinching to seal it. This is going to form the rim of the pie, giving you a nice edge, making it easier to crimp. If there are any places where the edge feels too thin, you can take some of that excess dough and tuck it under the rim. This is going to make sure that your edge is nice and even for crimping. 
So now that you have a nice edge, we're going to crimp the pie. And to do this, push the edge of the dough with your index finger on your dominant hand in between your thumb and index finger on your other hand. And do this all the way around the pie until done. And if your pie crust feels too soft to crimp, just pop it in the freezer for a few minutes to harden it up. Now we're going to move on to baking. So stick your pie crust in the freezer while you preheat your oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. So because there's no filling in the pie, we need to add pie weights so that the pie crust does not puff up while baking. Now you can use store bought pie weights, dry rice, sugar, or dry beans for this. So get some tin foil or parchment paper and line the inside of the pie so that we can add our pie weights. I like to use tin foil because it's a little bit more sturdy and then I like to trim it up and roll the edge over so that it's easier to pull out the pie weights after baking. So once your tin foil is in place, add your pie weights, filling it up almost all the way to the top. I like to use sugar because you can use it over and over again and the sugar won't go bad. So now that your pie weights are in place, bake the pie for 15 minutes at 425 degrees Fahrenheit on the bottom shelf of your oven. After baking, remove the pie weights and use a fork to crick it all over the bottom and sides of the pie crust to form tiny air holes so that your pie crust doesn't puff up during the next stage of baking. And then we're going to bake the pie for another 6-10 to 10 minutes or until golden brown at the same settings as before. So while the pie crust is baking, we're going to make an egg wash. And as you can see by the photo, there's quite a few types of egg wash to choose from. And they each have their own unique look aesthetically, but don't really have an effect on the texture or flavor very much at all. Just know that the ones that include egg will help to keep the pie crust from getting soggy. So for this pie, we're going to use an egg yolk and water mixture. So separate one large egg yolk from the egg white and add to it one tablespoon of water and whisk to combine. So when your pie crust is done baking, grab it out of the oven and then use a pastry brush to coat the entire surface of the pie crust. After applying the egg wash, we're going to bake the pie on the same settings as before for one more minute just to cook the egg. So after one more minute of baking, your pie crust is now done, so you can set it to the side to cool off until later. Next we're going to prepare some dark chocolate shavings to sprinkle all over the top of the pie, and this is going to bring the whole thing together and make your pie look like a work of art. So grab a small bowl, a vegetable peeler, and a few bars of dark chocolate, and then peel the bars the same way that you would a carrot until you have about a handful of chocolate shavings or enough to cover the top of the pie. Now you can use milk chocolate if you want, I just prefer dark chocolate because I like the flavor. And I like to use thin bars of chocolate, this way I can break up the leftover chocolate and stick a few pieces in each slice for further garnish. So once you think you have enough chocolate shavings, put your chocolate to the side and then we're going to move on to make our whipped cream topping. Now you can use store bought whipped cream, but homemade whipped cream tastes way better. And you can make it by hand, but if you have an electric mixer, it only takes a few minutes to make. So start out by sticking your mixing bowl and whisk in the freezer for 15 minutes, because the colder the whipped cream is when you whip it, the better and lighter it's going to be when you're done. So after 15 minutes, grab your mixing bowl and a measuring cup and add 2 cups or 1 pint of heavy cream to the measuring cup and then add in 1 teaspoon of vanilla extract and then 4 tablespoons of powdered sugar and give it a quick stir and then pour it into the mixing bowl. Now if you're using an electric mixer like me, you're going to whip the mixture on the medium high setting until the whipped cream starts to billow up on the sides of the bowl. Now depending on your mixer, this is going to take roughly 5 minutes, and if you're using a stand mixer like me, don't walk away from the mixer because you don't want to over whip your whipped cream, which is definitely what I did. Fortunately, it was still usable and tasted great, but if you're cooking for people with experience in the kitchen, they're definitely going to call you out on it. So just take the 5 minutes and watch the magic happen, because it's definitely satisfying. And realistically, I probably should have stopped here, but instead I kept going and ended up over whipping. So after the whipped cream is done, it's time to assemble the pie. So put your whipped cream to the side and grab your pie crust, which should be cooled off by now. Next, grab your chocolate filling and pour it into the pie using a spatula to smooth it out so that it's even all over the pie. After adding your chocolate filling, grab your whipped cream and then use a spatula to scoop it onto the pie and then spread it out evenly all over the top of the pie all the way to the edges. And after adding the whipped cream, grab the chocolate shavings that we prepared earlier and use your hand to sprinkle them all over the top of the pie. And you can add as much or as little as you'd like. This step is all about making your pie look that much more delicious. So after adding your chocolate shavings, congratulations, your pie is now done and it can be served immediately.
This pie will last at room temperature for about two hours and will keep in the refrigerator for three to four days, but it is best enjoyed the day of making. So for more information and recipes, you can check out our website, and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to our channel, and as always, thank you for watching and enjoy your chocolate cream pie.